So hi everyone, it's Tina from Number Doll Beauty. So today I'm going to be doing a little overview slash review of the Lorac Pro 2 palette. So this is all eyeshadows. I've already sort of shown the original one, um, which is the black one. So this is the number two, which is the grey colour. And I'll link that video down below. And I also went over the Lorac um, cheek and eye palette as well. So that's in there. So it's pretty much the same sort of look. Um, so same size, same number of eyeshadows. They both have 16 eyeshadows each with a little mirror. Um, but yeah, to number two. I actually do like the actual packaging. So it is this nice gray, very sort of, um, I suppose, sleek cardboard. That's a very you know, sleek sort of feeling. But this one, you can see the black, it attracts everything. Smudges, makeup, it all sort of stands out. This one has been fine so far, but I haven't had it that long. But I think the gray is just a much better sort of, I suppose, color. Smudge, the smudges don't show up as much as you can sort of see on there. So opening it up, We've got the mirror, generous sort of size mirror. And like I said, the 16 eyeshadows. So just like the original one, it's got the matte finishes up the top. I think there's only one sort of semi-matte out of them. And then all of the sort of frost or shimmer finishes down the bottom. I really like the way that they set this out. So, you know, most ones have them sort of all over the place. So you've got a frost here, a shimmer, a matte, and etc. But at least you know the top matte, the bottom pretty much shimmer and frost or metallic finishes. I do like the shades. I'll just show you as a quick comparison to the original one. I mean, I probably would, I do reach for this one a little bit more because I do love the, the top. I love the browns that they have in this original um, eyeshadow palette, but I actually am loving a lot of these um, colors, but I do honestly reach for the mattes a lot more. There's nothing wrong with the frost or the shimmer finishes. Overall, I just prefer, for my personal use, using a lot of the um, matte eyeshadows. And they are just as soft and silky and very pigmented like the um, original palette. But you just have to use a really, really light touch. And I actually used this on my eye look today. It's probably sort of worn off a little bit. But I used Buff, which is like this beige color, sort of all over my lid. And then I actually mix light brown and buff to sort of go over my, my eyelid. And then um, Rose, this beautiful shimmer there, champagne shimmer. I use that sort of in the middle out, sort of give it a bit of a, a bit of a sheeny radiance. And then um, in the crease, I've got Cool Grey and Plum. You sort of see a little bit of depth in there because I do have, as you can see, hooded, hooded eyes. And I sort of brought it up a little bit so it sort of lifts my eye a little bit. Because um, you can't really see that crease when you see what like this you can sort of see it But when I'm, I'm relaxed like as you normally would be um, You can sort of just see a little bit there. So I just sort of bring it up a little bit I've actually got one of my brushes so You can sort of see what I mean sort of in there And I normally have my eye open when I do it because it'll actually give me um, a more natural sort of look So how my eye is normally like when I'm talking when I'm out and about that's sort of how it is and that's where I know sort of how high to bring it and sort of what angle um, and then I've got nectar sort of to add some warmth it's that beautiful peachy color as you can see and I love the names too so nectar quite a, an appropriate name for it a beautiful sort of um, very pale light peachy color and I just sort of added some warmth in there as well which is like to do sometimes when I've got a like a peachy sort of pink blush I can use that and um, sort of above the crease as well to add that sort of warmth and tie in that look same thing too sometimes with my bronzer um, I might sort of add that in there to give a little bit of um I suppose a shadow on um, sort of nice warm sort of shadow there I'm not if it's if it's slightly orangey it doesn't really matter because that'll add some nice warmth to the crease I try not when I'm contouring though to um, use an orange sort of look I haven't contoured today I've just sort of bronze so that's sort of what I do. Anyway, that's just a little quick thing of the um, the palette, but the shadows are very, very soft. So you just need the lightest touch. I made the mistake with the original one, sort of um, going in with my brush like this, and all it does is really just attack it. You just sort of go in light around it, so it gives a nice sort of even wear away at the thing. But you can see this isn't used as much. I'm really using these ones and these ones sort of for my um, sort of everyday looks and I, just a little bit of glamour or a little bit of radiance I'll use the frost but then we swatch them but even just very gently you can see how well pigmented they are and silky you can see so that's buff which is that sort of light beige that is light brown I do prefer 
cool gray cool gray is for, to its word it's a, a grayish top which is really really beautiful for sort of in the crease sort of smoky like you know, if you want to draw it up under here and then that one doesn't show up too much on my skin which is nectar it's that sort of peachy color but um it just adds that little bit of warmth which is what i really really like i'm just gonna put my hand sanitizer down here as well on my tissues um and plum and navy now look at that there's plum and that's that oh it's a beautiful it's like a purpley plum though it's really really pretty this would be good if there were some more berry colors in this palette it would be phenomenal it would really really be lovely and that navy as you can see is quite a brilliant shade it has like quite a sort of light light almost slightly greeny um blue to it it is gorgeous now some people might think oh my gosh when are you ever going to wear that on your lids well you can definitely there is the charcoal which is that you can mix it with that um, if you want to wear it over your lid um, with the black the black is more like a very very deep gray honestly on my skin it's like a very very deep gray so that's what they call black in this palette and that's the charcoal but the charcoal is more like a light gray and that's more like one of those deep charcoal colors you know it's like gray black but this one you can you can mix it to tone it down you can use it in your crease and you can also which i have tried to do as well if you want to use it as a liner it's a beautiful color if you don't want to maybe do like like what i've done today like really dark black jet black or you don't want a brown or a plum liner you can go for a nice navy and look at that look at that finish you probably wouldn't use as much as i've done there because you will get a little bit of fallout but you can see it lines really really nicely any of them you can use as liners but obviously you probably want to use more of the sort of darker or more brilliant shades in the palette so that I mean that one the black or what i call like a really deep charcoal is beautiful for a liner as well and um, if you don't want it like i said jet black the navy's gorgeous you can wear that with pretty much anything the grays the the browns in here the nectar would look lovely depending on what sort of look you're doing or if you if there's no sort of greens or any other blues in this palette and in the original one there really isn't anything in there but you know if you've got other palettes um you can sort of mix it up with that one you could even sort of go with the, the um the slate in here that's a beautiful color so if you've got both of them obviously if you're just looking at this one it's fine the black in the original palette is definitely the same and as a gray black but you can even see i'll just clean this brush it's so silky that they glide there's the black if you want to use that as a liner also don't be afraid if you look at it and go oh gosh you know what you know i'd love it to be a little bit cooler a little bit warmer some of the shades or a little bit darker mix the shadows um you can mix them on your brush so don't be think you're limited to the colors that you see in the actual um eyeshadow palette i've just got some of my ray morris brushes here for example you know what, what i like to do is i'll mix these ones if i want to warm it up obviously that's cool but if i want to add in a little bit of that peach or if i've got the um the the buff which is like that very very pale beige i think oh gosh that's just too pale i can mix these in together you know i can check the color on there maybe a little bit more tap off the excess and i can go in like that rather than doing it straight on the lid where it might get a little bit muddy especially if you're um you may be trying to apply colors in there sort of just check it on your hand mix it in and then sort of do it on your eye always have your tissues or your towel or whatever you can sort of spot clean in between and sort of go in there and that's just a suggestion and now just 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 to sort of show you what i mean so you probably wouldn't necessarily need all that much just the lightest touch because you do get a bit of that powder sort of playing in the air so you only really need a little bit and then you can sort of build it up if you prefer um yeah because they are very very soft they're kind of like my i suppose my wet and wild ones are quite soft they're very pigmented but they are quite soft so you just got to be careful how you touch it with the brush i'm just going to show you some obviously do stain more i think it kind of does stain a little bit you can sort of see i sort of noticed it when i've done it as a liner but honestly to make it last sort of during the whole day especially with my very oily lids i always prime my eyes so i'm going to go from this way in and look at that look at that so there we go we've got cocoa beautiful deep chocolatey brown i mean cocoa brown um, and then that one's jade gosh jade that would go beautifully with 
gold or bronze or copper it just gorgeous and the finish it's really really nice like you don't get a lot of I haven't had a lot of fill out but like I said I always prime my eyes um, I go in gently and then if I want to sort of build build up the pigmentation I can do that um, as well like I wouldn't put that much like I wouldn't attack it like that for my eye but they're not they're not chunky shadows which is what I like then we've got silver and chrome Okay, I used too much there, but look at look at that silver. Look at that beautiful frosty silver. That is gorgeous. That would look great with like you like a, you did like your you know your smoky eye, and you, but you use that sort of maybe in the in the center or something like that, or line on, or just you know it's just like that. Wow, that one is chrome. It's not what you think of when you think of like chrome finishes on I don't know wheels for example or something that sort of that sort of grey silver but it's, it's brown but it does have that chrome look to it even these mixed together you can go like in that way and mix it Let me sort of see I've just mixed it like I said you're, you're not going to get that payoff on your eyelids unless you sort of go in quite sort of <laughs> go in quite well or even use them wet but I suggest that you just slowly sort of build it up use your primer just so you don't get a sort of a lot of fall, fallout I don't know if you can see in there, if you've got quite line lids, as, you know, well you might not necessarily want to use the Shimmer of Frost, it's sort of settling in there, so I just say just, yeah, gentle touch, build it up if you need. But I, I mean, I did notice, like, say compared to some of my Frost or Metallic finishes in my Urban Decay palette, it might not be quite that pigmented um, without sort of building it up only because they're quite they're quite loose if, if you have wet and wild you know what I mean they're quite sort of loose, loose very very soft so you just got to be careful when you put your brush in there so the next two are mocha and rose mocha is quite a warm sort of color and then you've got rose which to me first off that doesn't make me think of mocha because I think something slightly deeper and then with rose I think of obviously more pinks or you know th those sorts of colors or reds or something and it's definitely neither of those but it's so beautiful these would be great you'd mix mocha and light brown or rose and nectar if you wanted to even make it warmer it's beautiful um, and then I'm just going to quickly swatch the other two beige looks a little bit chalky on my skin only because it just makes me look even paler so that's beige there it's a beige <laughs> and then snow I actually had to build it up to sort of show up on my skin only because I on my sort of coloring I mean, honestly, I haven't used this much. I have sort of used it just really teeny tiny little bit in there. But I honestly prefer either beige up there because it's just, you know, it's, it's more of a skin tone color or buff, which is that matte beige up there. I don't really need to draw too much attention to really what I don't have. My poor over plucked brows, which I would wish were a little bit thicker here or there was something, but I'm trying to regrow them. But yeah, so that's pretty much the shade. So honestly, I do prefer the deeper frosty metallic ones um, here where out of these finishes, whereas the top ones, the matte ones, which are my preference, I probably do prefer the, the lighter colors. Even though I might have to work at the frosty metallic finishes a little bit to sort of get the color payoff, what I do like is that they don't have that sort of chunky glitter. They're not chunky, glittery, sh shimmery shadows. They're more of that frost metallic finish, which is that very sh fine um, sort of piece. So let me just, I've got this clean one here, which is my Ray Morris Detail Point Shader. I've done a sort of crease shader video, which I'll link down below. So my first in my series of brushes, and it's the, on, I'm starting off with eye brushes much more fluffier ones which is this that this is the one I showed in this one this is the really fine point one the number nine which is what I love to sort of go in here because I don't have much, I don't have a very big sort of lid and then it's like when that flops down it's like oh no but um if I'm going to use let's go for let's go for cool, rose and mocha tap 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 I'm gonna scare you all eye in there quite going across the lid and everything and particularly I love it for um, sort of frosty sha frosty shadows but sort of just to tap it in interesting kind of like um, 
Urban Decay, I always feel that to me to put that sort of black or charcoal or some deep color sort of in, because I, I have the other one, I didn't really need black in here, but of course, if you haven't got that one, um, you know, it's just great to have a black in there. Like I said, if you, even if you don't want to use it for a smoky eye or whatever, it's still great to use uh, as a liner. Uh, and like I said, you can, if, if, if you find you're getting fallout and stuff like that with it um, dry, you can try obviously using it wet. Let's just do a comparison. Oh, I've got the video going. I've got my Max Fix Plus here. We'll just use water. It doesn't matter. Really we'll seal it. Now that's the charcoal black. I'm going to talk the charcoal black. It is pretty much. There it is there. Dry. Smudge my line. And there it is wet. Just gives it like a little bit deeper. Different color. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you can use it sort of where if you prefer that. Um, or mix in the other colors to maybe if you want like a blue black or a brown black or whatever. Anyway, I hope you guys like the video. I know I do tend to ramble when I show these things and my swatches. I mean, oh my gosh, I should probably should have just done close ups, but this is how I do it. Thanks for watching. Check out the other Lorac ones if you haven't. Lorac? 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 Carol's about backwards. Thanks for watching.